This is the worst. Since that last video, we went ahead and we, we did some additional things. I'm not sure that we talk about doing brakes, but we brought the, the Jeep back in and we did the upper ball joint again. We did another hub assembly. We did pads and rotors on the front just to eliminate that in its entirety. And then I put the mad scientist, great Scott, Doc Brown in the driver's seat. And we drove, despite the fact that he did not want to do that because he does not like the death wobble. The death wobble. And it definitely gave him the shakes. And the big thing we're dealing with right now is a rotational vibration. Jeffrey is in the background and he is currently taking out the rear drive shaft and installing a known good used front drive shaft. So we had already previously removed the front drive shaft from this Jeep just to eliminate that from the equation. It actually has a little bit of play in the internal slip of the drive shaft. I went out, I found a good used drive shaft from our inventory. Jeffrey is doing a great job installing that in the front and we're removing the rear drive shaft. Why? Because we have this rotational vibration that comes in around 45, 50 miles per hour. Now, ultimately that rear drive shaft should not have any effect on the front shimmies and shakes of death wobble. But what I'm hoping that we can do is put the front drive shaft in, remove the rear because it's at a, you know, the Jeep's a two door JK that's been lifted two and a half inches. So those rear CV heads are just a little out of their plane of energy transfer. And that way we can eliminate improbable rear drive line. So if that underfoot vibration that comes in at 45, 50 miles per hour is still there, then I know that we need to keep working towards finding this vibrational, uh, rotational vibration. So the plan is to eliminate rotational vibration see if running on the front drive shaft gives us any other parameter differences. You may actually see in some of the other footage that we went ahead and opened the front differential. Why? Again, we're just trying to eliminate rotational vibrations. And we thought maybe the carrier was doing something funky in there. It's not. We had done axle seals on this back in October. The funny thing is, that the Jeep actually came in for death wobble on October 3rd, and we do have that timeline. And at some point in this video, we'll probably go over it. But for the time being, I'm looking forward to switching out the drive shafts and getting it on the road and seeing if that makes any difference that is worth mentioning. Okay, we are extra safe right now. We're both wearing our safety helmets that Davey uh, got out last time we went on this excursion. We are driving in front wheel drive. This is a front wheel drive automobile at this point. We did have Jeffrey remove that rear drive shaft, install a good used front drive shaft. And we're gonna see how that affects our experience. What's interesting, while I pontificate upon our experiment, uh, this is only possible because of the JK TJs had this available to them in the late 2000s. Well, 97, 98, actually. Prior to that, we actually had wet slip rear drive shafts. And that means that once the drive shaft was pulled, it was actually a broad exposure to the transfer case. And so the transfer case fluid would puke out the rear tail shaft. So fortunately, we have dry slips, totally encapsulated. We can drive at highway speeds on the front axle. That's what we're gonna do. This truck skip leg day. I mean, when it's a high country package. I mean, they're not joking. Like just all the lift, none of the rubber. All right, we're gonna hit this first crack expansion joint. 48 miles per hour, totally uneventful. All right, we are getting onto the highway. The highway to hell. Okay, sixth gear, 60 miles per hour. I don't feel the rotational vibration. It's important to note that Davey is not ballast weight. I rode with Scott the other day and it was absolutely shaking and shimmying and doing, doing death wobble, the dirty deed. So we're gonna hit this first bridge, 71 miles per hour. Boom, off the bridge. So we hit our test, our test 
expansion joints, potholes, cracks, and bridge abutments. What is the name of that? What do you think that meeting point is? The crack. <laughs> and we're gonna have to go back uh, eastbound. We're gonna have to hit the eastbound lane because this thing didn't even give me an iota of shaking, which I, you know, in, in hindsight is not actually that helpful. I got nothing. This is gonna be smooth sailing for the rest of the way. We'll, uh, we'll head back to the shop and figure out what our next step is. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of tour. I, I, I stole the Savages camera for the moment. You're gonna see one of our unique things that we do is we do timing marks or torque marks on all the applications. You probably see that in a number of our videos. I'm gonna go ahead and come over here. You can see the Italian stallion working on that front drive shaft uh, as it is. In fact, actually you can see him torque marking right now um, where he is, you know, ensuring that things are, you know, reasonably where they should be. So, so I'm on my, my lav. Oh my gosh, I did a thing. I'm sorry, Davey, you're gonna have to cut this out because, oh my God, I'm, I've got my lav mic wrapped around my scooter chair here. Who knows, maybe I, I... all right, that's working still. Yeah, all right, God bless it. So you can, this is, this is a, a two and a half now, before Jeffrey jumps in there, he's, he's speed demon at the moment. You can see kind of how harsh this angle is. The camera doesn't do it justice, but this is exiting uh, this circle. Here's it's exiting the very top. This side you can really see, especially at the top. So this is at full droop. And so, yeah, that's a good vantage point. You can see how those CVs are coming out at kind of what, a, what we would consider an implausible angle. So this isn't really relevant to uh, running down the highway. If you're off-roading your vehicle and you go with even just a two and a half inch lift on a two door and you get hung up high centered or you know, you're just stretching the legs, you can see just how bad that rear drive shaft angle gets. So Jeffrey's gonna go ahead and get that out. I'm gonna get out of his way, kind of show folks what we're looking at. One of the things that's hot, that's kind of stuck out to me from the very beginning is there's a bit of rust blow out here in this lower uh, control arm. The bushings are in good condition. They're under stress right now because of, you know, the fact that it's drooped. This particular lift kit did not come with rear lower control arms. Uh, it's a good suggestion, but not a requirement uh, when doing a, you know, two and a half inch lift. We come back here, you can see our torque marks where we loosen all the control all the suspension components when we do a lift kit it's actually still pretty critical to break free all the suspension components you see these nice fox shocks back here the sway bar links have been you know removed and and, and retorqued you can actually see where there's some timing marks in there on the brake caliper brackets you can see where the track bar has been you know reasonably broken free the back despite being a little rusty, is actually very healthy. Other than some bushings, really nothing to give us rotational play other than that drive shaft stuff. And again, if this is your first time watching this video, it's important to note that there are four different sets of tires here. So that we are actually on set number four, and this particular set of Bridgestone Duelers actually came off of a Jeep under 5,000 miles. We'll let Jeffrey keep doing his work and we'll see you on the road. Oh, I'm totally in on this. Here's the Savage. We had some requests to try and get a, a view from underneath the Jeep. So Savage is gonna get right in Jeffrey's way. We're gonna work on getting the GoPro. Oh. Where we put it, Where we put it, Jeff? Yeah. See, now it's we. Now it's we in the first video. I saw the comments from the vehicle ride where he said, no, no, that was all me. I was, I was almost rooting for it to fall off at that point. Right? Now, now it's totally on Davey. He's going to wrap it around the exhaust. <laughs> Get it. Get it, Savage. The viewers have spoken and we're listening. If you were to add to describe to our viewers what your technique is. YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> YOLO. 
Did you like flick the zip ties and be like, that's not going anywhere? It's not going anywhere. Captain's log. It's been 14 years since we started sailing this vessel named Serenity. So this drive is going to take us uh, back out onto the highway. The adjustments made for this particular drive. We now have the rear drive shaft back in because obviously just driving on the front drive shaft, what that does is actually gives load or preload to the front drive to the front axle. So it kind of holds it still. It gives it another place. You know, when all of those components are, are locked up, spinning with the drive shaft, uh, it can mitigate death wobble. It, it, it can, and we know that, but it was interesting to see us not death wobble. Well, we gotta try, we gotta try everything. So here we are, uh, rear drive shaft back in. We are driving in two wheel drive. What we did this time around, pulled the lower control arms out and we inspected bushings once again, because ultimately what changes when you load up the front axle, that load pushes against the, the, the control arms. And um, we had this set at the manufacturer's recommended length. And roughly that put the control arms at about 23 inches and a quarter. We had already played around with it and turned up our caster, ended up at roughly 23 inches and maybe three eighths. What we now did was we have access to other manufacturers data regarding their control arm lengths. And we went ahead and we set the control arm length of these adjustable control arms to that of another manufacturer's. And we set them to 20 two and three quarters. The parameter changes for this time out on the highway is going to be shorter control arms. So that means we will actually have reduced caster because it's solid axle. So we will reduce our caster number and we will be adding the, the rear drive shaft and driving on that. Here we go, road dogs. Time to test this next theory, this next selection of parts in the process. All right, this is, uh, this is the crown moment. That semi is on fire. That semi is on fire. He's literally the, his truck is on fire. It's not gonna end well. All right, we're gonna hit race speeds. We're gonna hit this bridge. This is the crown moment. We're at 71 miles per hour. Here comes the big bridge abutment. Oh, shit. a bad one that was a bad one that was a bad one okay Woo. Woo. doggy i'm out of breath that was a buck and bronco there Woo. how's that feel from the passenger seat i mean i know what it feels like from the driver's seat and like the lack of control in the process you ever wrote the comment at Waterman? yes <laughs> That's what it's like, huh? <sighs> so what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in four high and we're gonna drive back eastbound and we're gonna try and hit those same, same abutments and see if that does anything different for us. And uh, that will let us know, I don't know what it will let us know, but it's just gonna be more data that we collect. So what I can tell you is making the reasonably finite adjustment of just changing the front control arm length to caster uh, relativity did not do the job. So now that we have the rear drive shaft in, we're gonna drive it in four wheel high. I wonder how far that, that semi truck on fire is gonna make it. We're, uh, oh, I'm gonna shift into four high. That means we're loading up the front axle get out on the oh we got a nice clear drive here now if it death wobbles for high that'll be a real adventure race speeds 71 72 all right i'm consistent i'm holding 74 73 bridge nothing here we go 72 bridge nothing okay what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna take us out of four-wheel drive and I'm gonna head us, I'm gonna take us into, into two. So we're out of, out of four, now we're running two. 
still at 70 some miles per hour. We're gonna see the stretch of road here. This is usually, if I'm gonna get it to shake, it's gonna shake back there. We're in two wheel drive. Drive shaft is obviously not engaged anymore. Bridge, bridge, and there it was at 74 miles per hour, but I was out of the drive shaft. I was out of the drive shaft. Like I wasn't, I wasn't giving it gas. I wasn't giving it throttle. So we're in two wheel drive. I wasn't throttled through the bump. I'm looking for plumes of smoke in the sky. Probably a while before he realizes. I mean, that, was pl that plume of gray smoke was pretty thick. Hey old dog, hey old man, what do you think's wrong with it? That's what you think, you're just gonna wander away. Serenity now.